Hello everyone, Nintendo here. Today I'm doing the game of the year, again. No one cares, I just enjoy them for doing fuck no reason. Uh, anyway, this year was difficult to select a game for the game of the year, because fuck me, this year was superb for games. 2017 has been an amazing year, and I think that was very obvious by many. The release of the Switch as well was also amazing. Uh, I'm making that noted as I only very recently got a Switch, and just saying right now, Super Mario Odyssey will not be getting an award, as I actually haven't played that at all. But I've played some other Switch games, but let's get right into it. Anyway, at number 5 is a game that honestly caught me off guard, and that is Resident Evil 7. Damn, this game was amazing. Now, full warning everyone here, I am not an experienced Resident Evil player. I've only played a bit of Resident Evil 6 and Raccoon City, and those were terrible games. I mean, it's very well known those were terrible. And that's probably why I never got into the previous titles, like, you know, 4 or the original games. Those were apparently really good. I heard so many good things about it. But Resident Evil 7 immediately caught my attention with how it was going to differentiate itself from the previous titles. It wasn't a third person game at all. There was going to be less emphasis on the zombies, if anything, they're not even in the game at all, unless you counted the molded enemies. It wasn't this overly unnecessary action blockbuster game, instead it was a tense first person survival horror game that had a lot of inspiration from games like Silent Hills and Outlast. And damn, it was good. The game looks beautiful thanks to its new engine, the RE engine, which uses a new form of graphics, the photorealistic graphics. Every little detail is great. The smallest bits of details in the Baker's family house is brought to life. It's honestly one of the most memorable buildings in gaming, probably due to that. It's also somewhat of a Resident Evil original vibe with its design. It's so good. The audio is so satisfying as well, and it needed it to be for the genre it was trying to be. The enemies, the main enemies, the Baker family is so awesome. Easily one of the most memorable characters or families in gaming, especially Jack. It's great, and if you haven't experienced it yet, I recommend you doing so. It's scary, yes, but it's worth it. Criticism-wise, the boss battles are a bit weak, and the last 30 to 60 minutes of the game do fall very short of what it was beforehand. But everything before that point is just so well done that it does warrant your purchase. And at number 4 is a game that I've personally been hyped for, for since about the announcement even. It took forever for it to release, yet somehow with even with the delays and worries that maybe it won't be as good as it was trying to be with its continuous hype, the game exceeds the hype. Cuphead is a brilliant title that is punishingly difficult but never unfair. It's a game that will kick your ass but you won't care because you're just having too much fun to give up. I think it's very obvious where this game succeeds the best and it's at its visual and audio department. The 30 start was a perfect pick. I'm surprised it wasn't really attempted beforehand, and Cuphead makes it work. Cuphead is definitely a product made from extreme passion from the developers. Every little bit of detail in this game is well done. This is a 60 FPS game, which you would be expecting it to be, but the fact that this was done by a development team by about 5 people, maybe even less, and that each frame was done in 24 FPS for an animation standard boggles my mind. This is a definite passion project, and it's really paid off for the developers. Negative wise, it's just the run and gun sections that let the game down, and they're not bad, but they aren't the focus of the game's development, and it was obvious. But it really doesn't bring the game down too much, it's a near 10 out of 10, with the one gripe that it's a 9 out of 10. But I have to give it to the developers that if I was to give individual awards, this would definitely win for the visual and audio style in 2017. Heck, it could even win for overall because this is a style that hasn't been done so well and paid off this well. And to really show how good 2017 has been, this was a game I was definite was going to be my game of the year. And I'm just going to say it now, Prey. Prey was a game that caught me off guard in every single way. I was someone who didn't want this game to be become something because of its name. That was it. I liked the original Prey, but it was more so the fact they cancelled Prey 2 and tried to reboot it with Prey 2017, a game that has no resemblance to the original title. But after playing it, I forgave it because it was a masterpiece. It was a 10 out of 10. It's still a 10 out of 10. That's how good 2017 was that the top 3 games are 10 out of 10 games. Prey is a superb game. The story is okay, but it's the gameplay where the game excels. It's a game that brings those memories of the first time you played Bioshock, System Shock, Half-Life and Dishonored. 
it's not an original feeling for sure, but it's such an emotion that you forgive it. The game is filled to the brim with content, which again surprised me. I was not expecting to get 30 to 40 hours of content from Prey. I don't think anyone was. Maybe it was the fact that this game surprised me that I think it's a 10 out of 10 game. But it's been 7 months and I still think it is that. It's a shame that this game failed to reach its expectations from Bethesda because it's a game that fell under the radar. But if you haven't played it yet, I again recommend you doing so because it's a game that you will not regret playing. And hey ho, this is where I'm going to get disliked to oblivion most likely if this gets views. And number two is uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This game is superb, again a 10 out of 10, and honestly if number 1 didn't have such an impact on me to keep with me since I first played it, this would have won it easily. I only got this game in December, and maybe I can't give this game an nomination until I give it more time, how I should even do this video until I give it more time. But I need to get this list done and just out there. Maybe I will look at this back on one day and say damn I should have given this a game of the year. But yes, this is second. Breath of the Wild isn't just brilliant, but it's a technological masterpiece. This game is massive. It has hundreds of hours of content. It looks brilliant. The sound design is perfect. And all of this is on a, the Switch. The Switch nailed 2017. Nintendo honestly fixed everything that they did wrong with the Wii U with the Switch. With Breath of the Wild being their first major fix alongside the Switch, what can I say that hasn't been said that my mention of what it's great for and what others have said, apart from they're not lies? Breath of the Wild is the best game released by Nintendo. I think that personally, and I think many other people will agree with me. And I must emphasise that I've never played a Zelda game beforehand, so I don't know much about the lore, but this was a game that intrigued me so much that I probably will change that. But I will stick with saying that this is Nintendo's best game ever. And as always, before we get to number one, the game of the year, there are some games that I missed out or just didn't get to play. Some games I did play and enjoyed were PUBG. It's a good game that's really addicting, aside from the terrible developers. It's innovative and it changed the gaming market. It's a solid 8 out of 10. Mario Rabbids was a surprise hit. The mix of Mario and Rabbids with an XCOM gameplay style shouldn't work at all, but somehow it does thanks to some brilliant gameplay and a funny script. Again, it's a solid 8 out of 10. And finally, there were so many games I didn't get to play that I think deserve a mention from what others have said. So quickly we have Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, Super Mario Odyssey, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Horizon Zero Dawn, Nier Automata, The Evil Within 2, Assassin's Creed Origins, Yakuza 0 and Injustice 2. Like I say, I hope to get around to these games soon in the future, but they just aren't liggable for me to give as I haven't played these games. But my number one game was one I did play. I'm so happy I did. And this is definitely a choice people will question because from the outlook it doesn't look like it should win a game of the year. Gameplay wise it doesn't. But the impact it left to me, the fact that I'm so intrigued with the game 3 months after playing it just makes it my game of the year for 2017. And I'm talking about Doki Doki Literature Club. Yes, you heard that right. It's no meme or anything. My game of the year 2017 is indeed Doki Doki Literature Club. I, I don't understand how to like talk about this game without spoiling it. I imagine this is probably what it was like to love Undertale, which I didn't love personally. Not the fan base, which was cancerous for Undertale, but the game itself. How it deceived you. Except Doki Doki puts that to the maximum and then some. If you haven't played Doki Doki or seen someone do so, then play it. It's free. There is literally nothing stopping you unless you don't have a PC. Doki Doki is a game that has impacted me too much to not put on my game of the year. At its core, it's just a visual novel. For the first two to three hours, it's just that. But after those first three hours, it's perfection. It's brilliant. It fucks with your mind. It lodges itself into your mind. What you see and witness is fucked, basically. But you can't stop playing it because you're too intrigued from that point on. There are better stories out there, heck, even in the visual novel genre. But no visual novel comes close for impact. Not even a game does for me. Doki Doki Literature Club is a 10 out of 10 because of what it lacks in gameplay. It makes up with the impact and the characters. I won't say much more than that because 
This game is best left unsaid. It's a game that must be experienced first-handed. So I honestly recommend that you go play it. You will not regret it. Doki Doki Literature Club is my game of the year for 2017. And like I said earlier, I might regret this in the future. But for now on, from this current second of time, I think it deserves it. But anyway, that's basically all for this year's game of the year. Comment down below what you think. I'm expecting a bit of divisive opinions for my game of the year. And heck, comment down below what you think your game of the year for 2017 was. I'm intrigued. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and like. I try to release free videos of this uh, about every week, if I remember to.